Pokemon is one of the most beloved franchises in the history of video games. Typically, the goal is to progress to each town, capturing Pokemon along the way, to beat the gym leaders and eventually defeat the Elite Four. These games have a huge following, not only amongst gamers, but in the speedrun community as well. Within a few years of the series' release, fans were clamoring for more. The next game would show the world of Pokemon in 3D for the first time. What they got was Pokemon Snap. Hold up, isn't Pokemon Snap an on-rails shooter? How do you speedrun a game when you can barely control the cart? How difficult can it be to speedrun a game when the cart moves at the same speed the entire time? The community has spent years pushing this game to its limits, squeezing out every possible second they can. Before we get into the history, let's go over some basics. To beat Pokemon Snap and trigger the credit sequence, you have to submit a picture of Mew on Rainbow Cloud to Professor Oak. There are seven stages in the game, beach, tunnel, volcano, river, cave, valley, and rainbow cloud. To unlock rainbow cloud, you need to take pictures of 40 different Pokemon and score 130,000 points. The better pictures you take, the more points Professor Oak gives you. Now that we know the route, let's get started. Our story begins in 2006. A forum thread is posted on Speed Demo's archive asking, Can you speedrun Pokemon Snap? The initial reaction to the thread is a resounding no, but a few users have their interest piqued. A handful of players dust off the old cartridge and fire up their consoles to conduct an investigation into Pokemon Island in search of speed tech and glory. Later that month, a user named Lokarin has a good idea of how the run should be laid out. Unfortunately, no footage exists of any practice runs or theory crafting in this time frame. As time passes by, the thread eventually dies, and Pokemon Snap fades back into obscurity. Two years later, the question arises once more on the SDA forums. Is it possible to speedrun Pokemon Snap? Along comes runner John Carlo, aka Gia, with the first recorded single segment test run. Most notably, Gia held the world record in Zombies Ate My Neighbors for almost seven years. After a month of testing and practice, Gia produces a 2402, the gold standard for Pokemon Snap speedruns for years to come. Let's take a closer look at what Gia does that separates his run from a casual playthrough. Gia never repeats any of the stages throughout his run, only going into each stage as few times as possible to progress through the game. He quits the course once he has all the pictures he needs, which means he doesn't have to play through to the end of each level. This comes in handy on stages like Tunnel for early apples. To unlock the third stage in the game, Volcano, you need to throw an apple-shaped Pokémon food at an electrode, blocking the path. Gia knew you can only unlock apples once you have 24,000 points. So by quickly entering Tunnel, taking a few pictures and exiting the stage, he was able to return to Oak to unlock apples, which he used to unlock Volcano. Gia applies a similar trick to get Pester Balls early. To unlock Pester Balls, you need to have 72,500 points, which is fairly doable by the end of Volcano. Since Professor Oak will only unlock one thing at a time, you would unlock River first and then have to submit a picture from River to unlock Pester Balls. However, if you already have enough points, you can take a quick picture and exit the stage quickly. Just when you enter River, it's possible to instantly take a picture of the riverbank and submit it to Professor Oak. The game counts this as a picture of Poliwag, even though it's hidden behind the grass. This will trigger Oak to unlock Pester Balls, which are needed to unlock the next stage, Cave. Additionally, he is aware of cart mechanics. The cart moves fastest when the camera is facing forward, and slowest when the camera is facing backwards. If you zoom in to take a picture, however, you lock in the cart's speed and direction. 
this gives you the freedom to look around without having to worry about controlling the cart. With little help from other users on Speed Demo's archive, Gia crafted his own route for the run, which still holds up today. Gia's run would stand for several years before it would be challenged by a new generation of speedrunners. With the creation of Speedruns Live, we see a new set of players picking up Pokemon Snap. A common thread through most of these races is frontrunner Riker Z, showing a dominance on the leaderboard with the first place rank in over 85% of his races. In 2012, while playing on the Wii version of the game, Riker Z achieves a few record times, like a 2330 on May 11th, a 2311 on November 11th, and a 2257 on December 3rd. He would eventually switch over to the superior N64 version, where he continued the warpath. In 2013, Riker Z improved the record three more times. Finally, on September 21st, 2013, over five years after Gia's 2402, Riker Z lowered the world record down to a 2233. One of the most important optimizations Riker Z implements into his run is lag reduction. Like many other N64 games, such as Donkey Kong 64 or GoldenEye 007, there is lag the more 3D models there are on screen. To compensate, the console does not render objects that are not in the field of view of the camera. To keep the game from slowing down, Riker Z would look up at the sky or down at the floor when he wasn't setting up to take a picture. Riker Z brought with him many other improvements, such as taking better pictures of Butterfree and Electabuzz. Additionally, he takes a picture of Moltres earlier, which costs him some points but allows him to exit the stage faster. By taking better pictures earlier in the run, Riker Z only had to take one picture in Valley. Each photo you submit to Professor Oak takes about four seconds. In Riker Z's run, he only takes one photo, which saves him about 20 seconds over Gia's run. Riker Z was streaming his attempts on Twitch, and eventually attracted another competitor. This new runner, Spark, dedicated himself to the game. Riker and Spark would bounce ideas off each other and would race each other frequently. There was a, uh, not, there was not a community, I will say. There was, there was, I saw one name that did it, and that name was Riker Z. I, you know, and I, I spoke to him. I, uh, I was in his chat a lot. I asked him questions, and eventually, um, we became, you know, we became kind of friends, and we, we started to, uh, stream kind of side by side and do a lot of races. And he, he was really the one that, that showed me the ropes, and, uh, gave me an idea of what it, what I should know about Pokemon Snap speedrunning and uh, from everything he kind of learned on his own. And In just a few months though, Spark was catching up to Riker Z. Just after Riker got his 2233 on September 21st, Spark got a 2232 on September 26th. But he wasn't done yet. Spark kept pushing himself to take the record further ahead. Over the next few months, Spark streamed constantly. He even started to neglect his studies. I actually vividly remember um, sitting in uh, a history class, a Western Civ history class in college, and not paying attention at all to the, the lecture, and um, just sitting in my notebook, just writing notes about about point totals. And like I'm just like like I was thinking, just like man, this would be the best thing for a, like a girl to see me do. Um, and uh, and were like point point totals and the 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 cleanest way to get out of beach and and kind of optimizing tunnel and i remember that was the same day all like the day that i just like completely zoned out of class and i think i like failed a quiz but later that day those notes those notes helped me get the record later that day like that was legit the same day that i got the record finally on christmas eve that year spark achieved a 2214 by doing every trick better Exiting stages faster and mashing through text boxes quicker, Spark was able to lower the record by 18 seconds. 2214. Wow. The Pokemon Snap community was more alive now than it had ever been before, and this was just the beginning. A little over a month later, Carmers got the first sub-22 minute time, a 21.39. Oh, 2139. It has been done. 2139. World record. Way to go! Something was a little different, though. He wasn't playing on English. He was playing the Japanese version of the game. Why is that? 
It was discovered that the Japanese version of Snap is almost identical to the version released in North America, but saves time in a few places because of fewer and faster text boxes. Interestingly, Riker Z and a few others had tested the Japanese version of the game to see if it was faster, but determined the time save was minimal or non-existent. As it turns out, the actual gameplay inside the levels is the same, but the menus contain all the time differences. Due to an optimization made between the release of the Japanese version and the North American version, the North American version has faster oak check screens. So while the Japanese version has fewer and faster text boxes, the North American version regains some of that time with picture submission. The English version, however, loses significant time due to Professor Oak's welcome back voice line every time he returned to his lab. Overall, the Japanese version saves 20 seconds over the North American version. Karmers also introduced a new trick to the run, called Mankey Snipe. By throwing pester balls at Mankey before you can see him, you can trigger the cutscene which unlocks the path to Professor Oak. As a result of Karmers' world record, all serious runners began playing on the Japanese version of the game. This record would stand for almost a year before someone was finally able to beat Karmers time. That man was Game Fan Dan. No, when I when I first started playing the game, there there was really I didn't really have much to go off of. I had videos of other people's runs, but they didn't really explain anything. I had to figure out by myself that, you know, uh, turning the camera at all slows you down. Uh, holding Z and looking forward keeps your position momentum forward, you know? I mean, looking down made sense, and looking up made sense for lag reduction, but other than that, it was pretty much all just blind. So I think another person who started running at, like around the same time I did was Blue Infinity 22. And and I think he's the main reason that I was able to improve my times because I had someone who was there with me, like experiencing learning the game by themselves also. So we like off of each other, we like formed ideas and routes and it was great. Guys, we saved one tenth of a second. Holy shit. On November 26, 2014, Game Fan Dan got a 21.38. Dan bleeds time throughout the run, but has a better Mankey Snipe and finishes the run strong to clinch the world record. He would eventually lower his time down to a 21.30 on February 9th, 2015. Oh, wait a minute. I did do it. That's world record, everybody. Duh. Game Fan Dan focused on optimizing strategies, taking better pictures, and implementing better lag reduction in order to lower his time. On October 2nd, 2015, a runner named Quo would lower the record to a 21-22. Quo, as it turns out, is pretty good at this game. 23, alright. That... Was sick. That was a good run. Quo was a Quo was a monster, man. He broke that game open in terms of finding strategies. Cause I mean, when I played through the game, I was never really thinking about like camera placement for certain things, and Quo just blew blew my mind right open on that one. <laughs> he deserved the world record, that's for sure. He tried a lot harder than I was. Up until this point, runners would take a picture of Pikachu riding Electrode in order to get enough points to unlock apples. However, if you take better pictures on Beach, you can take two quick pictures of Pikachu and Electrode and exit the stage faster. His run would be the first to use the boost throw on Volcano. To take a picture of the coughing sign, you have to throw a pester ball into the volcano. By boosting at the start of the level and throwing a pester ball just right, you can spawn the sign sooner and exit Volcano much faster. With these two improvements and a solid run, Quo took the record for the first time, but not for very long. Yeah, so I guess most of the tech was just, yeah, at that point was not being bad. Um, you know, beach points were rough at the time as they are now. So something like that was uh, obviously something bad to work on. Yeah, just having like enough points for like the Volcano exit where you want to get Moltres or early Moltres. A month later, Arg My Toast got a 2113 on November 6th, 2015. Oh my god! Oh my god! 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm free. I'm fucking free. Oh, I'm free, guys. I'm free. Oh. The run is a cleaner version of Quo's 2122, and Toast is able to save time on a river and rainbow cloud that Quo had lost. Argmai Toast was another person that helped in creating routes, and he was great. He learned the game from a 12-hour challenge, and then just stuck to it after that. Um, but I think... I'm pretty sure... He, yeah, he definitely showed up before I had the record, so he was there... I think after Game Fandan got his 2130, but before I got my 2122. Showed up somewhere in that time. And he did the 12-hour challenge, and he actually got pretty good really fast. I think he bopped me like... A month after I got my record. It was sad. <laughs> yeah, no, Toast was just better than me in a few aspects. Um, I think my strengths more lie in um, trying to optimize, you know, camera movement, um, lag reduction, and like exiting levels, but I wasn't really focusing on points, and that's what like Toast, Drogi, and Levon all like trashed me on. So that's how they got better than me. Because <laughs> I'd be taking like two picks in Valley, and they'd just, that's where they would save their time. Just a few months later, on February 1st, 2016, up-and-coming runner Drogi was able to tie the record with a lower 2113, and a few months after that, brought it down to a 2107. When 2110, so really good run. It's a 2107.97. Um, I counted the frames and I'm really glad I sub 2108. Drogi takes a picture of Pikachu in Beach, which means he doesn't have to take a picture of Pikachu in Tunnel. Additionally, by optimizing his points in Beach, he can take a picture of Electrode much further away than either Toast or Quo were able to. Later on in Tunnel, he takes an earlier picture of Diglett, which costs him some points, to get a better picture of Doug Trio, which more than makes up for it. At the end of Tunnel, Drogi throws an apple at Electrode before the Magnemites have formed into Magneton. Since it takes a few seconds for Electrode to explode and trigger the cutscene to unlock Volcano, Drogi had enough time for the Magnemites to merge into Magneton and get a picture before the cutscene started. In Volcano, after Moltres is knocked into the lava, you can take a picture of it just as it's coming out. This doesn't give nearly as many points as the poseless Moltres, but allows you to exit Volcano much faster. This trick is called Early Moltres, or Early Early Moltres name pending if you're insane. Later that year, Drogi would lower his time even more to a 2101. The timing part is right when the red text appears. No. I didn't knew it was world record. <laughs> yeah, that was my reaction. In addition to being proficient in all the tricks, he added a few improvements of his own. He takes a picture of Ditto earlier in the level because the following room has a lot more lag. Drogi also does Weeping Bell Snipe to start the transformation to Victory Bell sooner. This costs some points, but allows him to exit the level about 12 seconds faster. The writing was on the wall. Who would be the first to break through the sub-21 barrier? On January 3rd, 2017, after months of grinding, Levon got the first sub-21. Ah! Levon had been a viewer in fellow Snap speedrunner Calcium Lemon's chat, and had been climbing the leaderboard for six months. It was around the start of 2017 that a new strat was found for Beach. The game's tutorial, the three Pidgeys at the very start, normally lock your camera control until you take three pictures of Pidgey. A Japanese runner by the name of Koto discovered that you can take two pictures of the second Pidgey, meaning that you can look around freely for the third Pidgey. Levon and Annie Rill were messing around with this Koto Pidgey strat and found out that you could get an extra 800 points on Pidgey by looking to the right for the third Pidgey picture, for a total of 4,000 points. With this extra point boost, runners were able to take an even earlier picture of Electrode and Tunnel to get early apples. Levon's run was also the first run to have a zero pick valley. When he entered valley, he had enough points to unlock everything else he needed at the end of the game. All he needed to do was take a picture of the Doug Trio sign, and then lag reduce until Mankey Snipe. Levon's time on top would turn out to be short-lived. Drogi took back the world record about 10 hours later, and it was a big one. Oh shit, it's a huge world record. 
I'm sorry, Levon. <laughs> 2053. Uh, let's go. Drogi's 2053 just improved on the strategies and tricks used in Levon's run. After five more months of shirtless grinding, Levon would take the world record back from Drogi down to a 2053. Okay, I PB'd by half a second. That's nice. Not very long after Levon's run, Quo lowered the record down to a 2050. That was a 2050. Cool. That was a run. Quo was a top runner who had kept running the game. Quo's run is well executed, despite having a one-pick valley and re-entering a stage by accident. This record stood for a long time, and most of the other top runners had gone off to play other games. Quo completed the leaderboard sweep by holding the any% percent and 100% world records on N64, Wii, and Wii U simultaneously. Quo would also focus on a category called 250k points, which, incidentally, focuses on getting 250,000 points in a run. Drogi focused more on Super Mario 64 and Paper Mario. Levon became the world's greatest arms player, and the other former world record holders had since stopped running the game. Even though the top runners said that the 2050 world record was poorly optimized and a bad run, this record would stand uncontested for the longest time since Gia's 2402. In fact, there would be no new records in the last half of 2017 or all of 2018. In December 2018, I announced that I would be hosting a Pokemon Snap Any% percent tournament. This garnered interest throughout the community, and new and old runners alike had begun to practice their photography skills. At AGDQ 2019, new runners were learning the game, such as Liam Kings and Proto Man 5, both known for playing Super Mario 64. Uh, I think people were excited. So, like, one of the things about Snap is that, um, you know, race wise, it doesn't really work that well just because there's a coin flip in the middle of the run. And if one person gets it and the other one doesn't, well, basically the race is over by then because uh, no one's like time gap is that big that, you know, you can knock it closer and still win, right? Um, but I think like the format that we had uh, really lent itself well to Snap. So I think people were like, they thought about it and they got interested and then joined, obviously. And yeah, people seem to have a good time. So all in all, I think people were hyped about getting into it and were pretty excited throughout most of it. Around this time, there was an influx of personal bests, the likes of which the community had never seen. In just the first three months of 2019, Keto 22, Your Penguin, Otternami, CJ It's All Good, Tykevin 83, Collins VG, Miss Candiria, Rezu, Full Air, Liam Kings, Squidbird, Danimal Sounds, Proto Man 5, Calcium Lemon, Drogi, Levon, and myself all got PBs. On January 21st, 2019, Levon, who had been one of the few major runners still playing the game consistently, beat the world record with a lower 2050. Fucking retime that shit! Fucking retime that shit! If not for messing up Weeping Bell Snipe in Cave, it is likely he would have lowered the world record well into the 2040s. On January 28th, 2019, Drogi, infamous for taking Levon's first world record just 10 hours after he got it, broke the tied world record with the 2049. <laughs> I got it. Oh my god, that took me way too long, and it, it was so close, what the hell? I lost seven and a half seconds on Mew, and I crashed into Metapod. Oh, I'm so glad I got... <laughs> Good points, Zero Pick Valley, Weaving Bell Snipe were enough to lower the record. The tournament had yet to start, but still the community was reinvigorated. The combination of the tournament, as well as the influx of new runners, had led to a renewed interest in the game. A few days after Drogi's 2049, Quo took the record back with a 2045. The top level runners all had several seconds of time to save according to their sum of bests. Quo's 2050 didn't have zero pick valley. 
With this optimization and the other problems fixed, Quo was back on top. Since his first attempts at AGDQ 2019, Liam King's improvement had been astronomical. He steadily improved every day, and by the time of Quo's 2045, Liam King's PB was a 2053. A 2053 a month prior would have been just three seconds off the world record. There were players who had played for years who struggled to break through the sub-21 barrier. Liam had managed to do that in weeks. Yeah, Liam just like, like I taught him like the beginner strats at AGDQ, and by the end of AGDQ it's like, okay, he's like ready for the expert strats almost. <laughs> he just, he learns really fast and he can apply it in runs really like efficiently. The inaugural Pokemon Snap tournament began with very few surprises. CJ It's All Good won his first match against your Penguin because Penguin ditched the tourney for a date. You can decide who the real winner is there for yourself. I was a boy with a dream, and I emerged a man! <laughs> I would have beaten fucking Penguin with this fucking exhibition run. So I don't- I feel so much better about this DQ bullshit. Aside from that, the higher seeds won. The next round would bring a little more interest. You may know CJ as the other major collaborator behind the Speed Docs channel. Leading up to the tournament, CJ had lowered his time by over 30 seconds. Regardless, Drogi's PB was almost a minute faster than CJ's. For all intents and purposes, the match was a formality, a non-event. As the race progressed, it became clear that Drogi was on a really good pace. The tournament timer didn't show it, but Drogi was on a world record pace coming out of River. Weaving Bell Snipe? Nailed it. Zero Pick Valley? Of course. Drogi was heading into Mew nearly 5 seconds ahead of his PB. His best possible time with one split to go was a 20.38, 8 seconds off his sum of best. He ended the run with a 20.43. 20.43! Ladies and gentlemen, we have just seen the world record what the fuck? Okay. live. I forfeit, on by the way. I just want to let you all know. I just want to let you all know. <laughs> I am throwing in the towel. <laughs> oh my I'm gosh! Not, uh, I, I just want to let you know. I can't save a minute off of my PB. I can't do it's, that. It's, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's. Uh... You know what? The part that I'm most upset about. What's that? When we do yeah. the sequel to the Pokemon Snap Any% percent video, I'm going to have to put this in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to posterize myself. <laughs> GG, CJ. Drogi's record wouldn't stand. With consistent practice and grinding, Liam Kings snagged the world record from Drogi a few days later with a 2040. Everything about this run was smooth. A record that had stood for over a year had been lowered by 10 seconds in a couple of weeks by somebody who hadn't played the game until just a month prior. But back to the tournament. Later in the second round, Proto Man got a huge upset by beating Lafon literally by frames. Oh man, here it is! Oh my god, it's a 2117! <sighs> Dude, it's a do we have to retime this? We're gonna retime it, boys! Oh my goodness, we have to retime oh, that. Big a boy! Do you believe in miracles? <sighs> this. Do you believe in miracles? This sent Levon to the losers bracket, where he beat Alpha Delta Mike, Squidbird, Folair, Xerix, and myself to advance to the finals. On the winner's side, Quo had handily beaten almost everyone in his path with little exception. The grand finals would be Levon versus Quo for all the marbles. The end result was not as close of a match as it would have been when the tournament began. Levon had not been able to practice and play as often as Quo had, and his PB was nearly 10 seconds slower than Quo's. Quo won, and the tournament was officially over. But Quo wasn't satisfied with just the tournament win. Looking over his trophy collection, there was one blemish, a silver medal for N64 any percent. Determined to regain the full sweep, Quo made it his mission to lay Snap down to rest forever. He began grinding attempts on and offline. Eventually, he was able to get a time that would have been world record, but he was not recording. As the old adage goes, no vid, no did. He set back to work grinding. Quo even released a segmented speedrun that showed the full potential the run still had in it. 
That run clocked in at 2028. Yeah, so I tied Liam with a 2040, and it was like a 2040 and two frames. And like, my goal at the time was a 2039 for two reasons. First of all, that was the next milestone, first of all. Uh, but second of all, when I started, um, the record was 2139. So I thought like, oh, if the record can drop like a minute, I'll feel like good about that time. You know, like that was that was my goal. And it's like, I'm three frames off. I lost five seconds at new. Like, how hard can this be, right? And yeah, I got my 2038 like two weeks later. And I was like super excited. And I don't remember a time in my life that I've been so excited to like so sad in a short amount of time because I realized that my recording program was not recording. So that was not a fun time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was just, I had my goal there and I was motivated to do it. And it's like, okay, I got this time once. Like I can do it again. Finally, after weeks of grinding, it finally happened. Quo retook the world record with a 2035. And that is where the world record stands today. All right, what is it? 34, 35? Fireworks go off, explosions. Your man has done it. Only lost four and a half seconds at me this time. Damn. In his own words, Quo had finally achieved a respectable time. It took more than 10 years to lower the world record for Pokemon Snap just four minutes and 27 seconds. In that time, the game has been pushed to its limits multiple times. We're at a point now where squeezing a few extra hundred points or a few extra seconds seems impossible. To this day, there are still no known useful glitches to help improve the run. This means that every facet of the run is as optimized as possible. Pokemon Snap is not the largest community, and it isn't always the most visually interesting speed game, but the community has helped make the game what it is today, a deep and respectable speed game. Hey, thanks for watching. Consider supporting us on Patreon. It helps a lot.